Hello, this is Pastor Jay, Senior Pastor of Walking Truth Christian Fellowship Church. I pray that you will enjoy this message. Please pause this broadcast and go get every man that you know. Call them up, tell them to tune in and turn on to this message. Because this message is for men, but it's good for all mankind. Thank you, bless you, and I hope you enjoy this message. This is Pastor Jay. Peace. And, uh, and I was ready. I was like, here we go. We're going to crank this thing on up. Then he started, he stopped it right when we was about to get started. Amen. Lord, when you say, when you hear, when, Lord, have you ever heard the Baptist wall cry? No. Okay, when you hear it, don't run out. <laughs> don't run out. I'm just messing with you. When you hear it, there's no words to it, really. It's a war cry. Amen. Okay. No, I'm just, what are y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, so our old little war cry. Amen. Celebrating. Uh, Black History Month, amen, and all the struggles that African Americans have went through in this country and contributed to this country, a lot of great things, amen. Um, this message is going to be different, I'm going to move rapidly through it because we don't have much time, so young ladies that sit in the front, go sit over there please, please, I, any other time you can sit there, but today is a different day, amen. Oh, I want the men to come forward, amen. amen. Today is your day. Come on, sit in the front row. All of you that, that call yourself men, come sit in the front row. You don't need to go to the back. You don't need to hold up the wall. Yeah, come sit up right here. All right, all right, y'all, get it. y'all know what I've been doing for two weeks. Y'all got to get it. Amen. Just sit down. Y'all got y'all, y'all, got y'all Bibles. Yeah, I've been to this, you know. But, 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 but some ladies give them a Bible. Somebody give them a Bible. Yeah, don't get your Bible. Because this is for you today, y'all. Ladies, you don't listen to it. This message is good for you, but it's to them. Alright. Okay. This message is good for you, but it's to them. Amen. Praise God. So so this today, I mean, is your day. Alrighty. So I gave an analogy. Of uh, in a car, and and and, then, and then when I talk to the men, just ladies, remember, I'm not skipping over you. I just want to make sure that they hear and understand. Each one of you has had drive can know, know how to drive a car, right? Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna worry about if you're licensed or not, because they ain't nice. <laughs> but each one of you know how to drive a car, right? right? And each one of you know how to start a car. You know how to to take, and the car is used to go from point A to point B, right? Mm-hmm. It's faster than walking, isn't it? And you prefer to drive a car than to walk a lot of times, right? Especially if it's a far distance. You'd rather be in the car, right? Okay, so think of car, C-A-R, right? So the first letter, C, okay, you want to be committed. Okay, you want to be accountable. And you want to be responsible. Now that C-A-R can go some other different directions too. You want to be consistent. You want to be accountable. And you want to have a relationship. And being in a car just like with Jesus See, Jesus drives us around. We're in the car with Jesus. Jesus is taking us from unsaved to saved. But Jesus was committed. He was accountable and responsible to God. So you can't get with God where you want to go until you ride in the car with him. I want you to get that. You can't expect to get where God wants you to go until you're fully committed to him, until you're fully accountable to him, accountable to him and until you're responsible to him. But also in that car is being committed to your family, be accountable to your family, responsible to your family. Be committed to your wife, be accountable to your wife, and be responsible for your wife. You see, you take that car and place any part of your life. Okay. Same thing to church. This body that you call yourself being in, you need to be committed, accountable, and responsible. And it's my fault that I haven't made you guys as committed and accountable and responsible as I could be because what I assumed is, is that you understood. But that's my fault. Because just because you live in that one life, and see, this is, what, this is what I've learned about this, this principle of God. You can't tell me that you're that way there and not here. See, you can fool some of the people, some of the time. But you can't tell me how good you do stuff out there. Because each one of y'all gonna work, don't you? And I look at you guys, you kind of, you kind of guys are never late, ain't you? You ain't never late if you can beat you know what I'm saying? You're on time, aren't you? Uh-huh. And then what happens is, while you're at work, so you commit to getting to work on time. Now, 
I don't know, some of you may be supervisors, but none of you are the, the supervisor or everybody, I don't think. So you're accountable to the people. You're accountable to a supervisor, right? <laughs> and you're responsible for whatever task that supervisor gives you, right? You see how this thing works? It works out this way all through your life. So what we want to give an example, we're going to look at a narrative. And it's kind of interesting because it's two contrasting narratives. And, I, and I've been so blessed by the study in the Old Testament. Now that book is even that book is even smaller and smaller than me. Because it's starting to make sense. The biggest problem with the Israelites was not that they were chosen, it was because they were chosen. Amen. <laughs> see, see, the night Bible said, we got that. In, in the day, you should get that too in the day. Look what Romans say. Instead of worshiping God, they worship everything but God. Israelites did that too. And you will do that too if you ain't in the right car. Amen. <laughs> if you're not in the right car, then you end up in the same situation. So there's two contrasting things going on I want to see in these narratives about being in the car. And I hope it won't be for you long. Go to Numbers chapter 31. And I'm going to kind of give you the setup. There's this group called the Midianites. And they're part of the land of Canaan. And they're part of the who God told the Israelites they should, could, and better conquer. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that I've learned through, through uh, Bible study in the night was that when God told Moses, Moses told Joshua, you see how this passed down, man? From man to man. Come on. From man to man. Joshua followed Moses. Joshua became the man. And then Caleb followed Joshua. God will always send a man. Mm-hmm. Now we may go to, to Judges where we find Deborah, but if you read it carefully, Deborah is reminding the man of what God has already told him. So it's nothing against women. Matter of fact, women, you are supposed to be there to be a help me. When we drop the ball, guess what? Don't be so quick to pick it up, but remind us what we're supposed to be doing. Well. Tell us that you're in the wrong car, brother. All right. mm-hmm. See, you in the car are you're not accountable. You're not responsible. You're not committed. No, you need to come on back and get in the car. Amen. The Israelites had that problem. They would jump in the car with God and ride with God for a minute. And there's always this period of peace. So we're going to talk about a period of war and a period of peace. But we're talking about the same God. So if you ride with God in the car for the war, you need to ride with God during the car during the peaceful times. But just like them, just like then, just like now, we forget what car we was in. You was in a Rolls Royce, but you walk up to a Volkswagen. Well, well, my Lord. <laughs> now, you can use that any way you want to. You got a beautiful wife, but you're looking over her shoulder looking at a Volkswagen. <laughs> you got a great church, but you're looking over, trying to avoid from being responsible in the church. So you say, well, they do this and they do that. You in a Rolls Royce. Hey, man. Why are you looking at a beautiful kid? God has prepared a table for you. But you won't eat crumbs. Look at, over, look at uh, Numbers 31, chapter uh, 31, verse 1. Start reading. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Avenge the people of Israel on the Midianites. Stop. The, the Lord spoke to who? Moses. And Moses is a what? Man. Thank you. Let's try it again. The Lord spoke to Moses, and Moses is a what? Okay, I need them to say that. Oh, man. A man, right. I, ladies, I want you to say it, but I want to hear them more. I want to hear y'all more, okay? All right. All right. So the Lord spoke to Moses, and Moses is a man, and the Moses was told to take what? Vengeance. Vengeance. Take vengeance on the who? Okay, keep reading. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, saying... Arm men from among you for the war. Stop. Who do we arm? Men. Amen. For what? For war. war. Thank you. Go ahead. That they may go against Midian to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. So they're going to execute the Lord's will on an opponent. Men, your job is to execute the Lord's will no matter where you go. You're supposed to be so tight with the Lord that you know the Lord's will in any given situation and you execute it. Amen. 
If it's vengeance, you take vengeance. If it's caring, you take caring. Because our God, Jesus, was a lion and a lamb. Amen. He can whip you out of the temple oh, one God. day and be just as good to talk to a woman called adultery the next day and say, who is your accuser? Mm -hmm. And then the men all had to go away one at a time. See, that's the balance that you have as a man. See, society today don't give you that. Society today wants you to get in touch with your emotions. <laughs> and what I'm telling you, man, is that's not the answer. The answer is to get in the car and do your duty. Regardless of what you've been through, right? Some of you have been through some I heard you've been through this, you've been through that, and you get the candy, somebody didn't spank you or whatever, you've been through. I get that. I get that you've been through something. I get that you're hurt. But when do you stop letting what you've been through have direction over your destiny? Once you come to Christ, all that you went through, your sin and your hurt, is put on the cross. But men prefer darkness, men prefer darkness, men prefer darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. See, what you want to do is you continue to get sympathy for something that happened to you 30 years ago. See, these women are jumping up and down for some reason, and they shouldn't be. I'm not saying they're wrong, but they, they must feel it. You need to feel it. You need to get to the point where you understand that you have a responsibility. You have accountability. You have responsibility with a relationship with God. So he sends out the men. Read. You shall send a thousand from each of the tribes of Israel to the war. Mm -hmm. So there were provided out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand from each tribe. 12,000 armed for war. Mm -hmm. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand from each tribe, together with Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, with the vessels of the sanctuary and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. Okay, stop. So for, for, for time's sake, I'm going to expedite the story in this way. Go back and read the whole story. They kicked the Midian's butts. <laughs> they kicked their butt. But the only problem is it's, it's even then Moses dropped the ball because the rule was correct me if I'm wrong Venice, is that when you go into a nation you kill everybody yeah. unless, they repent, unless they repent you kill everybody but guess you see what the problem with a man is we cherish what we see so instead of killing they kill all the men oh yeah but guess who they bought back? The women. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, why would they bring back the women? Because they like what they look like. Mm -hmm. And it says in the story, Moses got mad at them. Okay. And said, hold on now. You killed all the men. And you didn't kill all the children. And you brought back these women and these children. And, and, and Moses even made a mistake. He didn't say, he should have said kill them all. But Moses kind of had an eye for a couple of them. Because he married a Midianite. Okay. So what Moses did was say, I tell you what, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Men all, see, when you're not committed to count with God and responsible, you cut things short. You make your own plan. Mm -hmm. And it'll sound kind of like what God wants, but it's not what God wants. Uh -huh. You're all in or all out. You can't cut God's word in half. You can rightly divide the word, but it's not in half, it's in full. Mm -hmm. See, see, when he said rightly divide the word, it's not dividing it in half, it's making it plain. So what he did was, Moses said, I'll tell you what, this is what you're going to do. Kill all the women that have lied with men. How you going to know that? But I guess they had a, a, a plan. They, you're going to kill all the women that lied with men. The only woman left is the virgin. But see, it's something about a woman. It's something about a beautiful woman. From a strange land. And it said, you can keep them and do what you want with them. But Moses said, I'll tell you what, make sure you give me my portion. <laughs> and the priest got their portion. And what we've learned in our Bible study is when you don't do what God said, leave a remnant, that remnant come back to haunt you later. <laughs> See, what you should have put to death, man, is pointing you right now. I hope y'all getting this. Because it took two weeks of my study for you to get this to y'all today. I was nervous when I said, you know, you're better. I don't care. I'm just saying, well, I don't care. Not care, Kirk. 
Because I don't. I'm trying to give you food. Yeah, that's right. I want to put you back in the Rolls Royce. Nice. And you don't need no credit. Mm. Good credit, good credit, bad credit, no job. I can preach you and teach you back into the call of God. Yeah. No matter what you've done, you can turn, you can actually get the key today. Go. You don't have to wait. The key is, I got three keys sitting right here for y'all. It's right, this word of God. Remember Peter got the keys? The keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom are the word of God. Jesus. So me has got a problem. Go ahead, do a 14. Go ahead. Okay. And Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds who had come from service in the war. Moses said to them, have you let all the women live? Behold, these on Balaam's advice caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And so the plague came among the congregation of the Lord. So, mm. when the men wasn't vigilant doing what they supposed to do, then they slipped. Mm -hmm. And then the curse came upon God's people. See, this is what I want to tell you. There's no such thing as no good woman unless a man is made of that way. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, <laughs> By nature, they're not, they're not that way. By God bringing them out of us, they're not that way. But when we don't stand up and be accountable and responsible, and then what we do, men, instead of being responsible for our woman, responsible for our family, what we'll do is do the Adam version. It's the woman that you gave me. So how is the gift that you gave me my curse? Wow. It becomes your curse because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Amen. So that's why she cursed, because you cursed. So now she got to do what you were supposed to do. She in the car by herself, driving the car, being accountable, being responsible, being committed to God, and you just riding along. Wow. Wow. And you didn't ride along. You in the trunk. Whoa. Don't want to be seen, don't want to be heard. I know it's tight, but it's right. Mm. So we have a victory that they win. Okay, I'm gonna go, they win. Let's go to Judges chapter 6, verse 1. Judges chapter 6 verse 1. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Start. So if the people did what was wrong in the sight of the Lord, who did it first? Men. The men. Starts with you. So wherever you see the people, say it's my fault. It's my fault. When you see, when you see, when, when you see it where the people have done something against God, it starts with you. God is a God of order. So it's not her, and then you see, 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 Adam ate because he thought he'd get away with it by letting her go first. So here you, you then, and, and read it, say, and she gave it to him, and he ate. All he had to do was say no and repent. He could repent for both of them because he's the one held accountable. Read. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian. Whoa. Hold on, y'all just beat me in. Y'all beat me in back in Moses' time. This is like five generations later. This is over 100 years later. Now you're telling me that the people that we beat are going to be the people that's going to oppress us? See, that's what I'm saying, man, when you're not accountable and responsible. When you're not committed, accountable and responsible. What happens is what God has saved you from, delivered you from, and helped you defeat, if you don't pay attention to God, will come back to haunt you. So the enemy got back in, but the enemy never left. Oh. Because you didn't kill the enemy. What you did was compromised. That other sea. What you did was compromise and align and you, what you want to restore. All because they look good. I get it. You feast with your eyes and not with your mind. Because what men do. Women feast with their ears. So it's what you say. But see, what you say don't match up what you do, then the woman has to check out on you. That's overpromising and underperforming. Read. Uh, gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. So they were oppressed by Midian seven years. You know, God will oppress you guys for a long time. On earth time now, that's a long time to be oppressed for seven years. Because you didn't do what God told you to do on the first year. 
Some of you men are under oppression because you haven't done what God told you. You ain't cut it out. You ain't killed that enemy within. And you want to pretend like you killed the enemy without. And I can tell you, you can't kill nothing. You don't know enough word. And you're strong. You can tote that barge, lift that bell. But can you defeat the devil? Can you, defeat, can, you, can you come into your house and speak over your house and everything in that house that's not holy would run up out that house? Or do you allow her to do it? Because she can do it. But it'd be nice if you could too. Amen. The Bible says that wives go home and ask your husband what the preacher talk about. Why should you ask her what you eat when I talk about? You, she should, you should be explaining to her. Because you're the man. Read. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel. Mm -hmm. And because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves the dens that are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. So the first next thing a man does when he doesn't do what he wants to do, he's going to go hide. <laughs> he's going to go hide from what he's supposed to conquer. They too strong. They too, they too tall. You know that sound familiar? They look like giants. Yeah, yeah Joshua. Mm. <laughs> Tell that body to get small, man. <laughs> this repeating thing of men dropping the ball and saying, everything, the, what, we, what we should conquer, could conquer, we don't. And then it comes back to haunt us and then we make excuses to why. And so we go hide in the caves. So I take my wife and my family. Instead of being in a house, I'm in a cave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read. For whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east will come up against them. Mm -hmm. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey. I wish I could have a map of here like we have to show you this, how, how bad it was for them. Wow. That these Midianites regrouped, re, re, re got together and then they came down and then they took over everything. Okay, the ones you should receive don't eat up all your food. You let somebody in your house, you let somebody in your life, you let somebody in your mind other than God, and now you wonder why you're going through what you're going through. It's because on the front end, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. And I ain't talking brothers as I'm judging you, I'm judging myself. I used to be like that. I got some people that can tell some stories. And I ain't perfect now. But I do know one thing, I check in with God every morning. Amen. Amen. God, what would you have me to do today? What would you want me to talk to me? What you want me to talk about today? What you want me to see on my show today? This is your show, they ain't mine. This is your church, they ain't mine. These are your people, not mine. Amen. Read. For they will come up with their livestock and their tents. They will come like locusts in number. Mm -hmm. Both they and their camels could not be counted, mm -hmm. so that they laid waste the land as they came in. Mm -hmm. And Israel was brought very low because of Midian. And the people of Israel cried out for help to the Lord. When the people of Israel cried out to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the people of Israel. Stop. The Lord's going to always send a what? Prophet. The prophet is a what? A man. Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm kind of... A prophet is a who? A man. A prophetess is a woman. Yes. Don't confuse the two. God knows the difference. <laughs> That's not a generic term. He's going to send a man. And who did he send a man to? Read. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery. Mm -hmm. And I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you mm -hmm. and drove them out before you and gave you their land. Mm -hmm. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Mm -hmm. But you have not obeyed my voice. Stop. You not did not what? Obey. Whose voice? His, His voice. So he sent a man to tell other men that you have not obeyed the voice of God. God is sent me to tell you, you have not obeyed the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll move on from there. <laughs> but to prove that it's true, let's go to Leviticus uh, 26 and 14. That's all right. Just sit there. Don't even worry about it. Close your Bible. Don't even worry about doing it. <laughs> listen to the show later. I want y'all to listen. Leviticus 26 and 14. Let's see, let's, let's see if this is true, what happened. Go read. But if you will not listen to me, you will not do all these commandments. Mm -hmm. If you spurn my statutes, 
And if your soul abhors my rules so that you will not do all my commandments, but break my covenant, mm -hmm. then I will do this to you. I will visit you with panic, with wasting disease and fever that consume the eyes and make the heart ache. And you shall sow your seed in vain. Watch this. For your enemies shall eat it. Huh. So the Benedites came and ate the food that they planted. This was preached back in Moses' time. That if you didn't obey the Lord, there's going to be a future time that you're going to reap what you sow. Mm. Or let's put it this way. You're going to reap what you don't sow. Wow. And what you don't do, you're not going to profit from. So when man, when you don't follow the Lord, there's no profit for you. The devourer coming to eat what you tried to plant because you haven't planted the way God wanted to plant. you gave given lip service, but you haven't given aid. Mm. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 47. I'm almost done. And I'll stop short. 28 47. I want to prove to you about this. Deuteronomy 28 and 47. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, mm -hmm. because of the abundance of all things, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and lacking everything. So in other words, we got this going on with the Midianites now, right? He said, you're going to serve them. You'll be oppressed by them. You will serve them. How are you going to serve somebody that you conquered? How are you going to serve sin when you've been delivered? In the New Testament, the Bible says, let us put to death the old man and walk in the newness of life. That's our problem. You keep looking back when you need to be looking forward. Amen. You keep trying to make excuses for what you don't have versus God saying, I got more to give you than you ever lost. Amen. But man, it starts with you. She can do it. She's doing it, isn't she? But how much more could y'all do if you would come together and do it together? Amen. Man is not meant to live alone. Man is not meant to live alone. Man is meant to have a help me. Man is meant to lead the nation. Are there women that can lead the nation? Of course there are. But the women that lead the nation are not the prototype. It's God never letting his word stop at us. Look how smart God is. He raises up a Deborah when the, when, when the man won't go forward. A lot of these women in here are raised up because you won't go forward. You get pat on the back for little things, but when you can do monumentous things. You women have settled so low that, that, that when you should get the world, they give you a piece of grace. We owe that to the church. We owe that to God. We owe that to the world to stand up as men and be the men of God that we've called to be. I'm almost done. James 120. Go to James. The problem is you forget. You, you get saved. You come to church, and, and then you forget. Go to James chapter 1, start at verse uh, 123. See, this is the problem. See, this is what happens to all of us. And women, this is for you, again, but this is for the men. Because James writes this, he said, brothers. So when you say brothers, you're speaking to who? Yeah. Do you know that 99% of the Bible is written to you? Because if it's good for you, it's going to be great for them. When you, be a, when you be consistent, accountable, and responsible when you're riding the right car, guess what? They happen to sit alongside of you and smile. Amen. And they're ready to take the wheel when you get tired. Amen. But they've been driving all along. And they look over at you and say, why don't you take the wheel? You say, oh, I don't feel like it today. I got a game to play. I got something else I need to do. James 1, 1, 1 read. James 1, 23. Uh-huh. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. He's like a who? A man. We talk to a man. Not mankind. This is man. He's like a natural man. Not a godly man. So this is opposite of what you should be. And what does a natural man do? Keep reading. Oh, keep reading. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. Is that what happened to the, to the Israelites and the Midianites? Yeah. They looked in the mirror of success 
and forgot the God that brought them the way that they gave. Mm. See, that's our problem, man. We go to the mirror and we look at it and we forget and then we turn away and forgot that you're not the natural man no more. You're the godly man. And the mirror, the woman, the man that you see in the mirror is God's man. And when you're God's man, you never forget. Amen. But when you're a natural man, you will. Because you look like God's man. <laughs> but then as soon as you turn, you're doing something different. You're doing something different, brothers. Jesus, think about a lion and a lamb. All wrapped up into one man. Think about Paul. God told him, a man of men, a Pharisee of Pharisee, how much he must suffer for the sake of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And Paul, being a full apostle, with all the sign and wonders gifts of the apostle, didn't prove his manhood by doing miracles. When he questioned his apostleship, I can picture Paul. It's, it's a vision that I have. Paul is sitting there all scrunched over. And he said, well, and people waiting for the sign, just like they did with Jesus. More signs, more bread, more spiritual welfare. Mm, mm. And I see Paul, they wait for Paul to do something. See, Paul, we saw you do some stuff the other day. We want you to do it right now for us. We're going to question the, the validity of your apostleship. And hopefully you'll get out of yourself and do something that we want you to do. But what Paul does all the time, he does it, does it. He said, you question whether the gospel is real. Yes. You question whether I'm an apostle. Yes. I can see him turn around, flip his robe down, mm. and look at the scars on his back. Mm. Mm. The wars he didn't fall. Beat within his life. The things he said, he said, if this doesn't prove that the gospel is real, my miracles don't. It's the fact that I'm willing to suffer for the sake of the people who I'm taught both to teach to, which was a Gentile nation, who were not his people, but will become his people. That's what men do. We take off our coat, and I should see a strike. I shouldn't see no more. I should, it shouldn't be all clear. You should have some battle scars. Not your own, not that stuff you went through in the past when you was a baby. I'm talking about now. Walking for Christ. Stand. And when you've done all you can do, stand some more. Right. Mm. I'm going to end with this verse, and I'll say this first. Go to 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. I'm going to read out the ESV. Because King James is worse. Quit. Nobody knows what it means. But this is what it says. 1 Corinthians 16 13. It says, Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Paul is telling the men, you need to act like men. You need to be strong for the nation. You need to be strong for the church. So in comparison, what we do is when we read the Old Testament, we watch the failure of man after man after man get in the car with God, they get out of the car with God, and then they fall. And then that's our schoolmaster. That should teach us, no, you're not Jews. You're the church. You live by grace. And because you live by grace, grace is a greater law than the law itself. You don't have to worry about the ceremony. Just be a man. It ain't what you come to church in. It's that you're the church. You're the head. You're the responsible one. You're the accountable one. You're the one who's committed. Car. C-A-R. Committed, accountable, and responsible. It's your fault, whatever the church is not. It falls on your shoulders. Because the women are doing a fantastic job when you drop the ball. So, man, I encourage you today. I said a lot of things. And some of them may hurt your feelings. But y'all already know my answer. Nancy, what's my answer? I don't what? Thank you. Because I love you enough to tell you the truth. And when you told the truth, it hurts. Don't be blinded by the darkness. Be blinded by the light. <laughs> and all it takes, men, is one step at a time. That's all it takes. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> so I'm going to encourage you today. Start being committed. Start being accountable. Start being responsible to God first. And he says, 
If you seek me first, he told us that he'd give us all things yes. according to his riches and glory. Amen. There's some glory to have, man. And all you got to do is trust God. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for your word that will come to the people and the men of God. Amen. Lord, I pray that the ladies will continue to encourage their men. These men, whether they're the sisters in Christ, the wife, cousin, but these men need to be encouraged. These men need to be challenged. These men need to hold themselves in a high character because they're God's men. Lord, no longer let them look in the mirror like a natural man, but look in the mirror like a holy man so he won't forget who he is. Yes. That no matter where he goes, he's the carrier of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we can't do none of this without the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to think that I left out the Holy Spirit. I didn't. The Holy Spirit is the, is the power to which we stand, do, and move. Yes. But you got to decide to surrender. So you got to decide that you're going to be one who has character to be accountable and responsibility to God and the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do through his word. The last verse was, man, stand, be strong. Be, be strong in the faith. And if you be strong in the faith, I guarantee you, you be the man of God that God has called you to be. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walk of Truth Radio Podcast, and I want to invite all those within the St. Louis metropolitan area and around the world to come worship with us every Sunday at 8 a.m. at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. We also have our Rescue Addiction Recovery Program on Mondays from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Our Bible studies are held every Tuesday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can also catch us, follow us, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Please come out and join us, follow us, follow our podcast, but most of all, get saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost, and always remember, walk in truth. And if you'd like to contact me by email, you can do so by going to Walk in Truth Ministries at Yahoo dot com or w-i-t-m-i-n at yahoo.com thank you and bless you and we look forward to worshiping and fellowshipping with you peace hello this is pastor jay i'm excited to invite you to come over to listen to our broadcast on youtube yes walk in true christian fellowship church on youtube we have some great videos over there and you'll be able to listen to all the lessons and the podcast so again subscribe like and continue to comment and listen. This is Pastor Jay. Talk to you later. Peace. God bless you and welcome to Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast. We appreciate and welcome all of you, our listeners around the world. Stay tuned to hear an exciting word from Pastor Teacher Dr. James Sutton.